Hi, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. Matt, Christy, Alonzo. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, uh, Mele we, Kalikimaka. Yes, we are. It's we're, the thing to say. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing. Uh, we, we, we wanted to hop back in before the New Year's and talk about a couple of very big movies open on Christmas Day. And yes, there are some other ones and we'll get caught up with them in 2020, we promise. But we're going to kick off with Greta Gerwig's Little Women. But before we do that, can I just say a quick thing about oh, cats? yes, by all means. We, cause I we can never say enough about cats. We yes. can never have enough cats content around here. We should mention the fact that this, this has happened since we last spoke with you guys that Universal announced it was putting out a high tech redo of Cats in theaters to make up for the fact that it was rushed and yes. there were visual effects issues that Tom Hooper like actually wasn't shy about complaining about. And so I guess the most glaring of these was the fact that you could see um, Judy Dench's wedding ring yes. on her human hand within <laughs> her cat for like, now we're going for realism. And I don't she didn't, know. And she didn't take it off. I mean, I, I guess she they figured just, they would they they'd digitize it, yeah. it out. So, and as, as we were saying before we began, like, I guess it's not that uncommon that like updated versions get sent out digitally yeah. to all the theaters. But this time they like, announced it like okay now it's going to be good <laughs> yeah the effects ain't the problem in that movie. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> it's a much larger not. issue here yeah. i'd like to see one with less effects really i think I, that movie would been more fun to just see them in their pajamas with the ping pong balls <laughs> no, I, I, like I, I i retweeted the news and i thought well this only works if they replace the whole movie and the soundtrack with another film <laughs> <laughs> with but, something else and then right. um, one thing that they were doing here and maybe they're doing it across the country you guys will have to let us know but here in LA at the Alamo Draft House they had a series of what they were calling rowdy screenings where they <laughs> encourage you to, to hoot and holler and meow and wear <laughs> costumes like they don't want you to say entire sentences like there are some guidelines but my husband went to one of these with a couple of his friends I'm like if you're gonna see this movie, they should call those this train is, wrecks. Screenings. This is, I mean, this is the way to do it. Because when we saw, it, I don't know how your screening was comparatively mm -hmm. sedate, but like my people were like trying to suppress their guffaws, and then they were like, "Fuck it, it's, 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 it's great. like Rocky Horror, right? Like this is they're right. now encouraging that kind it, of it's interaction. interactive experience, right? You don't right. go to Rocky Horror to sit enjoy, there silently, right? To enjoy that film right. as a work of art, to be immersed, right? You go. <laughs> Because you're making fun of it. You're, right. You're right. part of the experience. And right. so the, the upside of this was that um, they happened to catch the last showing in L.A. before they uploaded the mm. high-tech redone version. So they're so going to they, make an even rowdier screen? They saw the sloppy version. I, I mean, I yeah. think obviously in the larger extent, and from what, I, from what I've heard from people in the VFX world, this is not uncommon. It's just that everybody's ganging up on cats now, so we're talking about it in the press. But this is a thing that you do, you can do, and... Obviously, now that it's not like you have to ship new 35 millimeter reels to the theater, you're just g giving them a new series of ones and zeros. So you can switch that out pretty quickly. Like I think in the video game world, it's not uncommon for no, patch they do that all the time. patches to go um, out. Right. But yeah, this movie was uniquely rushed, you know, mm -hmm. like they didn't have it ready in time for the awards people to see it. I guess the Golden Globes saw like the pajamas version. And they still nominated it. Yes, for like best song, well, the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so so in, in circumstances in which things get rushed to theaters, I'm sure we'll, we'll be seeing more and more. We're like, we're just going to send out a new file and, you know, la-di-da. But yeah, it's hardly the issue here. Yes, <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Could they have put enough time in this movie to make it okay? I would say no. Like, what would need to happen for this to be good? Uh, <laughs> they would working have to, with the version that exists now, or are we, like, time traveling? Like, traveler? to make the, uh, nothing. There's nothing they right. can do. Nothing. There's absolutely <laughs> nothing. The only thing to make it good, it, like, the only way to win is not to play. <laughs> right. So says Whopper. Um, right? Also, That's, uh, yeah. apparently Universal has <laughs> I, taken... I, like I understood that reference. Um, Universal has taken any cat it's stuff off, for your consideration off of site, its awards yes. site. <laughs> so all the other movies you can like download. How will the materials. Razzies be able to honor it <laughs> if it's not up for consideration? They'll have to buy a ticket. At the rowdy screenings. Yeah, right. At the draft house. <laughs> I mean, and, and I'm, sh I'm sure like, you know, I think the, 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 the new song is shortlisted for the Oscars. And so that probably, I'm sure they're still going to do like, you know, whatever kind of for your consideration to like ASCAP or whoever, the people that vote in that category. But yeah, they have stripped it out of their like, you no, nope, nope. Let's, let's talk about Queen and Slim, please. Yikes. Anyway, so we had to catch you up on that. We had to cat you up <laughs> on that because it's of note. And, you know, if you if you guys are watching this on YouTube and you're looking on the little right-hand column there, like you'll notice that 
our cats review has way more reviews than our Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker reviews. So we'll just keep on bringing you cats news as it comes. <laughs> Do we want to make this a separate thing? We could just... Yes. Uh, this, yes. Was, this was five and a half minutes. We could just make yes. it its own No, video. no, no. This is all okay. part... Okay. This. What are we doing? Let's oh. just let's just keep talking. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, now let's, let's talk, talk about, about a good movie. movie from one of the worst films of the year to one of the best. Yes. Uh, so yeah. So this is. Do you want to? It's your favorite movie of the year, Alonzo. Okay. You go well. For it. Wow. Spoiler. Yes. Sorry. It is my. This is my number Spoiler. one. No, it's my you said one. this a long time ago. I though. did. It's my number one movie of 2019. Um. So this is Greta Gerwig uh, writing and directing the fourth major adaptation of Little Women. Uh, but there have been a ton of like TV versions, and there was that that odd. Um, modern day one with Leah Thompson last year. Like it's a public domain novel. So it gets done a lot, but the big, this is the fourth sort of major Hollywood studio adaptation. And she does something very interesting in that she is telling the story, but she's not telling it in the exact way that the book does. Um, Little Women has always been its own origin story. You know, it's about a woman's life and then realizing that that life could be the basis of a novel. Um, here we begin with a novelist and then having the flashbacks to the stuff that winds up going into the book. And I think that's a really effective thing, but it boils down to the four March sisters growing up in, um, a civil war era, Massachusetts with their, with their beloved Marmy played by Laura Dern. Uh, we have, uh, strong headed and tomboyish Joe played by Saoirse Ronan, uh, Florence Pugh as the sort of, um, flighty and, uh, how do we describe? She's like sort of superficial and vain. Like yeah, the, the aspirational. Yeah, the aspirational and sort of vain Amy, um, the the domestic uh, uh, Meg, played by uh, Emma Watson, and um, Beth. Beth. The, who's, Beth is sick. Beth is sick. <laughs> this is her primary character trait, and she plays the piano. Yes, uh, but I'll tell you, I think. But th- she's also, but she's sweet, and she's maybe a bit more responsible right and she's i think beth is a little bit more kind of eliza scanlon i right. just said that she's yeah, not uh, <laughs> beth, beth seems to be more following in kind of the tenets that her parents lay down than the other girls yeah so she's and, less prone to mischief it and, seems and i think that that all of the sisters beth included get much more of a moments to themselves and moments to express who they are in this version than in the other ones that I've seen. Totally. The opening up of the Amy character and giving her richness and depth and yes. pathos. And it's on the page, certainly, but some of it, much of it is how lovely Florence Pugh is in this role, yes. where quite often you would see Amy and think, ah, she's vapid. She's, she's, a, she's a climber. A flibberty gibbet. She a is. A clown. A clown. <laughs> and, um, and here, like, you really feel her emotion and you feel what her motives are for the choices that she makes in her life. As you say, the, the 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 major choice that happens in the third act is much more explained and laid out in this movie than it is in any other version. Mm-hmm. I think where often it feels peremptory and rushed and like, yeah. oh, what is that about? Um, the a major player in their lives is their neighbor um, Theodore Laurie Lawrence, played Timmy. by Timothy Chalamet, mm-hmm. uh, and his grandfather, played by Chris Cooper, um, who forms a bond with Beth because she reminds him of uh, his own daughter who died young. And um, yeah, it, this is just oh god, this is the most lovely movie. Like I was, Dave it's was delightful. watching. Dave was watching the screener, and I, I was just kind of going in out of the room and like feeling like I was going to start crying mm-hmm. over nothing, over like re- move, scenes that are not intended to like move you or tug at your heartstrings. But it's just all so gorgeous and cozy, and um, I, I, I made me it, it made me love all of these characters so much more. I think it's been it's very easy to make this the Joe show. Right. And be like, you know, oh, she's the she's the firebrand. She's the artist. She's the one who wants to break out of the, you know, the norms for women. But they all do in one way or another. And Gerwig gives them these moments to talk about what women are dealing with in this era of American history in terms of marriage and finances and career options and agency that feel completely organic and they don't feel like conversations between people where they're telling each other things they already know, which is a really hard bit of exposition to pull off. But it, I think really underscores what Alcott was trying to say and what the, what the book is saying about, uh, about the lives of, you know, I love the fact that it's not called little girls, it's called yeah. little women. You it's, know? it's a really tricky balance she pulls off because as you mentioned, there are many adaptations of little women and there are some that take place in a more modern 
day setting. This is rooted in the time and place of the novel, but there's a, a lightness and a freshness that make it totally contemporary, totally relevant. Absolutely. And it's not just the casting of young actresses who are hot right now. It's like, it's it's the the clarity and the wisdom with which they speak to each other and the richness of the way they are all developed. Then it makes it feel totally vital. The whole conversation about like a woman's place in life feels totally vital and not archaic at all. Mm. Um, it's beautiful. Yorick yes. LaSalle yes. shot it, who has been... Um, he shot look, High Life. <laughs> he shot Personal Shopper and I Am Love. And Clouds of Seals Maria. Yeah, and, and, um, and this and the score I was is the plot. totally the movie, transporting I, I, I wanna, yeah. in a way, like... Of course, he's a veteran. He's been around forever. But this is like Alexandra Duplass' greatest music ever. In, in, yeah, yes. I, I love the way this was shot too. And there's there's a, more so than I've seen in a lot of movies. This is uh, a movie that almost every shot would function as a work of art. And is, I was mm-hmm. particularly caught by the shot where it's later in the years as Beth and Joe are just on the beach. Mm. Yes. And it's that low shot. It's yeah. that really low kind of far off shot um, and I just thought that was lovely. I, this is a terrific movie. Um, my my only issue with this is that as much as I think Florence Pugh is really good in this, there's a couple places where it felt like her style and what and how she's bringing the dialogue out felt not quite the same as the rest of the sisters, and it just felt it felt different. And I and I can't. I'm having a little trouble. I mean, feeling that might be intentional because I think maybe she's the one who who sort of in the book you get the impression that she puts on airs that she tries to like act above her station. That she's the one who even after the family loses money still tries to sort of carry on as though like she were privileged. And so she might that might have been an intentional okay. choice on her and Gerwig's part. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that might be why she doesn't sound the way that Beth talks or the way that Meg talks. Right. Just a possibility. The, yeah, that makes sense. That there's like a pretension to it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just felt a little bit like you could pluck Hugh's performance and put that in a contemporary story. Okay. Whereas the way I didn't feel like Watson and Scanlan mm-hmm. and Ronan, hmm. um, the ones that end with N, <laughs> uh, you know, like the good Ninja Turtles ended up. <laughs> uh, oh, that's the Ninja Turtles. Anyway. There you go. That's, um, that's no, but I I love this movie. I probably gave it too low a score. In fact, I'm going to up my change score. I, yeah, match yours. Um, um, okay. the, there was also the... <laughs> uh, Again, I think, you know, talking about giving the, the sisters more more time to shine, um, I really felt like I understood Meg more on this one. And even though her, yeah. you know, her desires are to be a mother, to to tend to the home and raise children and be married, um, you know, she gets to articulate that and talk about it in a way that shows that the, they're taking it seriously. I mean, right. I think one of the things that's always been vital about, you know, people have crazy ideas about what the word feminism means, you know, but I think that uh, uh, some of the, the the smartest women I've heard talk about the subject is like, if you want to be a housewife, if you want to be a homemaker, if you want to be a mother, great. You should be able to do that. But the idea is to have the options available mm-hmm. where that if you don't want to do that, you have something else that you that's possible for you. That's but, your choice. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think the movie celebrates that this is her choice and this is the life she has chosen for herself and that she is happy in it. And she might occasionally long for luxuries or or things that are, that are not, you know, uh, immediately available to her, but ultimately comes to realize what is important and what are her priorities. Um, yeah, so this does feel like a, a lovely kind of continu- continuation of what Greta Gerwig did with Lady Bird. And sure. not just because Sir Ronan is the star of it. Um, also, Tracy Letts is trem- <sighs> tremendous in just a couple of scenes as yes. the editor at the newspaper. And he does kind of take on a fatherly role in some ways, like a, a gruff kind of fatherly role. Mm to Sir Sharon which is lovely he can just do it all um, Louis Garrel he's great in it hot 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 Meryl he, Streep awesome Meryl Streep yeah she gets to be uh, saucy in a few prime scenes but this does feel like thematically philosophically a continuation of what Greta Gerwig was saying with Lady Bird in celebrating like the individuality of women and we see that with all four of these women in the ways they choose to assert their individuality Mm -hmm. it it celebrates who they want to be not who society expects them to be she apparently wrote this first oh and then but you know like didn't what didn't have the clout to make it Mm -hmm. until after Lady Bird and I I like the jumping back and forth in time oh I think it works I think it's great yeah it's it's bold and also it it informs 
everything to come with so much more emotion. Like the Joe and Lori showdown. This is not a spoiler, people. Yes. But the the whole big, <laughs> right. you know that's coming. Yes. And what has happened previously, like, makes that moment so much more fraught yeah, than it already I, I, was. I think the, the all the stuff with Beth works better because right. of that. And I think it really sort of, again, enhances this notion of the the process of Joe as a writer, you know, which is, I guess, the process of Alcott as a writer because she's basically mm-hmm. her stand-in, you know, that by turning these things into flashbacks, it it turns this stuff into the fodder that she is able to convert into literature. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think I, I like the way that it jumps back and forth and you have to sort of pay attention to like the hairdos or the, you know, like certain clues as to when they are and how old they are. Mm-hmm. But I think it all works really well and it gives it a real vibrance. Somebody commented on Twitter and I can't recall who how the the tragedy of this movie is that the going rate for freelancers was the same in the 1870s <laughs> yes. as it is now. She gets paid a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's we like, wow. get paid a hundred bucks for something sometimes. <laughs> totally, yeah, 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 exactly. We're, we're we're still earning the same that they were in the in during Reconstruction. It's depressing. <laughs> um, so, what's your number then, Alonzo? I give it a ten. I'm, this is my favorite movie of 2019. Please go see it. It's so great. Please go see. It. I'm saying 9.5. I loved it too. It's on my top ten list. And there's this whole like bullshit discussion on Twitter about how men don't want to go see mm. little women. Man, you can't make me. Just go see it. Just You'll be it. overwhelmed with the craftsmanship and the beauty of it. You'll be transported. Yes. It's not a male or female thing, as no. evidenced by your number no, you're about to give, it's too. It's a terrific movie. It's great. It's it's beautiful. It's excellent. I loved it. Um, go see it. There's What's a lot number? of moments. Uh, 9.5. Right. There's a lot of moments in it, especially kind of in the back half of the film. There's a lot of times I'm like, oh, no. Oh, like, I was really <laughs> invested in all these characters. Um, and absolutely, absolutely love it. Go see it. And... Uh, yeah, if you think you're too much of a dude for this, then you suck. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a, I said it. Our number's at 9.7. It's at 95% on the tomato meter. There was a woman sitting behind me when I saw it at the DGA totally sobbing. Like, oh. there are quiet moments, and she was, like, snuffling. When it know. was over, uh, a, a friend of ours, who I won't name publicly in case he doesn't want me to, mm-hmm. and I had to, like, collect ourselves while other people were leaving the theater before we could walk out because we were just like... It's good, cathartic, happy crying, though. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this is, Let me specify here. This is great filmmaking, and yes. you are you are missing out if you don't go see it. Please go check it out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, please uh, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow us on the social medias at um, at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast All Day, where you can find out, yes, I, somebody's knocking at our door. Uh, you have got can, a package. Someone's here with a package. Okay, you can watch our TV recaps <laughs> and uh, news and all kinds of other stuff and lots of exciting things coming in 2020. Thank you for watching. Happy Bye. New Year. Bye. Bye.